Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Sophisticates by Mary. I wanted to show you how you can achieve these sharp sharp corners with only buttercream, some cake rounds, and your scraper. First thing you're going to need to do is mark out the diameter of your cake. This can be done with any geometric shaped cake. Geometric cakes are making a comeback right now. And those sharp corners can be difficult for anybody to get. So first thing you need to do is cut your cake board down to the size of your cake. You want it to be flush with the sides. Because the way that I achieved this, you want to have a board underneath the actual cake and then you put it on another board. But I will show you that. So I just filled this yellow cake with some chocolate buttercream. And don't do a real thick filling because you don't want it to spill out the sides especially with these ge geometric shapes and get a good filling in there get it smooth it out you don't have to use a piping bag I've just been on a kick right now of using the piping bag but it's not necessary and I wanted this cake to be a little on the taller side um, actually I kind of wish in hindsight that I had done one more layer but that's okay I will post next week the video for this entire cake and you'll see what I'm talking about at that point. So I went ahead and I used my thickened buttercream in between each, each uh, layer of cake, the same that I used to dam it with, but I wanted to go back in and really pack it into those, to those, um, the crevices to make sure that, like, again, no bulging happens. And I just used the rest of it to just do a rough crumb coat because you're going to have enough buttercream on this cake that your crumb coat doesn't have to be real perfect. But then again, if you know me at all, you know that I have a problem stopping with the scraper. <laughs> I never know when's a good time to stop. I just keep going. And I like to, when I'm doing a square cake or any other, any other shape that has sharp corners or any corners, um, to start from the corner and work your way into the middle. Then go to the other side and pull it in from that side. That's how you prevent the dragging of the buttercream around those corners because that can actually soften those corners. And you don't want that. So now I'm going to make the cardboard pieces that I'm going to use to really get those corners packed in there and to get those sharp edges. I wanted to, um, you need one for the top and one for the bottom. And after I marked out the size of the actual cake, I went back and I marked in a line about a quarter of an inch outside of the line of the, uh, the cake pan because you want to have at least a quarter of an inch gap in between the cake and the outside edge of your board. Now make two of these. I'm going to use my, my board, my plexiglass board, just as the cake board to display the cake on and to actually put it all together. And I use tape to get the board to stick to the plexiglass disc. And I did that between also between the board, the two boards that the cake is on. Now go in with your buttercream. This is after you have chilled the cake for a good 10 minutes in the freezer or 20 minutes in the refrigerator. And the way I get it smooth on top is I just hold my hand in, in one place and let the cake do the work. Then I cut a piece of parchment smaller than the cake board on the top, about a quarter of an inch smaller, so that um, it's easier to get this top board off. And I'm measuring and making sure that the cake board on the top and the cake board on the bottom are the same distance that they're level and I pipe those corners first those edges so that you because you're going to need most of your buttercream is going to be on those corners so really pack that in there and then go through and fill in between the two this is your first coat so it can be rough you're just wanting to get some stability in there before you do your final your final coats of buttercream so you just want to make sure that it's not sticking out the edges and again I'm going in and I'm going from the corner to the middle and then from the other corner to the middle and you lay your um your scraper almost level with the side of the board 
because you want to pull it, you don't want to scrape it. You got to keep that buttercream in those corners. Otherwise, you're dragging it in and you get indentations in the middle between the two boards. It kind of bows in in the middle. You don't want that. Stick it in the freezer again to get it to firm up. And this is your second coat. This is where you can go in and kind of fine tune what you didn't get the first time. I'm not using as much buttercream because you don't need to. And I'm just dispersing it since I didn't have a full coat like you did the first time. You just kind of move it around. So it's filled in. And use your scraper again. There's a lot of scraping with these shaped cakes. A lot of scraping. A lot of putting it in the freezer, bringing it back out again, doing another coat. It's kind of fiddly. But the end result is fantastic. I think it's beautiful. I find that the metal scraper gives me a better finish. Especially if you dip it in hot water. Or if you spray the cake with some water, that's what I have in that water bottle. And if you ever see me spraying a cake, that's just plain water. Helps me to smooth it out. And I'm really paying close attention to make sure that I'm holding that scraper. I don't know what degree that would be, but that is definitely less than a 45 degree angle from, from the, the, um, the cake. So I'm not scraping off too much. And the board on the top and the board on the bottom help you to keep the sides level. It gives you a guide. It definitely helps. And you can buy these plexiglass discs that I have, like that one I just took off. You can buy that in squares also. And I do have those at work. Actually, I'm missing some. But um, this way, you don't have to invest in those. You can just use cake boards that you probably already have. Now I flip the cake upside down so I can get the bottom board off. That second board that you saw me use that was bigger than the board that's actually left on the cake that you can't see. So I use that, what's that called? That's a paint palette knife, a sharp one. And I just gently score in to remove it, to loosen it up and make sure you're not pulling those corners, the buttercream out. You kind of angle it to, on the side and push it in instead of scraping it. Now you move the board and you then you remove your parchment and you can go back in and fill in the top. You're gonna have some gaps. And just smooth it in and remove your excess. Pay close attention to those corners. You want to make sure that you get buttercream in those corners. Those are, That's the part that ends up getting scraped down too far. When you're pulling your lip in on the top is those corners. So just pack it in there. And make sure you're holding your spatula level. Like I said, let the, let the cake do the spinning. Let the cake do the work. Just hold your spatula in one position. And you're going to want to raise that edge up so that you can pull it into the middle. I hope I'm describing this well and that you can understand. <laughs> There's a, lo a lot to it, but not really a lot to it. So if you have questions, please leave me a message and I'll do my best to answer. Like I said, there's a lot of, a lot of scraping that goes on. And when I'm pulling the top in, I start in the corner, bring the corners in, and then go back to your sides. I do the same thing for sheet cakes. I pull those corners in first, not putting much pressure, just kind of sc scraping the top. You want to scrape it in. You don't want to pull it in. Hold it level. Don't push down. I do like to use these plastic scrapers for a lot of a lot of things. Um, they do tend to get some scratches in them, so a metal scraper does do a cleaner job. So there you go, guys. Clean corners. No plexiglass discs. Way easier. Watch for the entire cake next week. That will be the tutorial on Tuesday. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time. Bye.